Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this time, we will be discussing Petty Cash Fund. So kapag sinabi natin Petty Cash Fund, once again, these are the cash segregated for payment of small expenses or petty expenses. Ang ibig sabihin ng petty kasi, this is small. So kapag yung right, kapatid mo, yung kaklase mo, maliit siya, right, para hindi siya ma-offend, sabihin mo, ang petty mo naman, right? Baka sakali, right, na ang pagkakarinig niya doon is pretty siya, eh matuwa pa siya sa'yo, right? Joke lang, right? Kidding aside, petty is the other term for small. Ay ba tayo doon? So here in Petty Cash Fund, meron tayong dalawang accounting system na pwedeng gamitin. What are the two accounting systems na pwede natin gamitin dito? Meron tayong tinatawag na impressed fund method. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na impressed fund method. And on the other hand, meron tayong tinatawag na fluctuating fund method. So what's the difference? Or what are the differences between the impressed fund system and the fluctuating fund system? Kapag sinabi natin impressed fund system, as a general rule, the petty cash balance is actually fixed. So hindi po yon nagbabago, hindi po yon napapalitan. Under fluctuating, from the word itself, here, the petty cash fund balance is not fixed. Ibig sabihin, pwede siyang mapalitan or pwede siyang magbago anytime during the period. Next, sabi natin dito sa impressed fund, general rule lang na fix si petty cash balance. And of course, kung may general rule, meron tayo always tinatawag na exceptions to the general rule. So what are the exceptions to the general rule? So there are actually two exceptions to the general rule. So na yung dalawang exceptions na yun? Number one is kapag nagkaroon ng replenishment. Again, number one, kapag nagkaroon ng replenishment. Sir, always ba na kapag nagkaroon ng replenishment, eh, hindi na fix yung petty cash fund balance? Of course not. Kailan lang siya hindi fix kapag nagkaroon ng replenishment? If and only if the amount of replenishment is not equal to the amount of expenses. Again, hindi lang siya magiging fix if the amount of replenishment is not equal to the amount of expenses. The second exception to the general rule is kapag meron tayong incurrence of expenses without replenishment. So kapag nag-incur tayo ng expenses and then walang replenishment na nangyari, sito it na hindi na rin mag-fix yung balance ng petty cash fund. Later on, papakita ko rin sa inyo yung mga yan. Alright? Then lastly here, alright, sa petty cash fund, kailan natin nire-record yung expenses? Alright? Kailan nagka nagkakaroon ng recording of expenses? Again, kailan nagkakaroon ng recording of expenses? So expenses are recorded under the impressed fund balance not upon incurrence but only upon replenishment or on the balance sheet date. Once again, expenses are only recorded under the impressed fund method upon replenishment or on the balance sheet date. While under the fluctuating fund method, see to it that recording of expenses will be on the date of incurrence. Ibig sabihin kung kailan siya na incur. So, para mas magets natin yung pinagkaiba nila, let's try to solve some problems. Alright? So, let's go to illustrative problem number one here in Petty Cash Fund. So, what are the requirements here? Requirement is to prepare the journal entries for the given transactions, include any appropriate adjusting entries at the end of the year, and, the, and reversing entries at the beginning of the following year. Right? So, journal entries lang ang inihingi. Illustrative one. As a step to safeguard the company's cash balance, Sophie Company established a petty cash fund in November 2016. The company from November 2016 through January 2017 completed the following right, transactions related to the petty cash fund. Ready? So, sabay natin silang i-discuss. Right? Start tayo. So, November 20, 2016. So, what happened noong November 20, 2016? The company established an impressed slash fluctuating fund amounting to 
and issued a check payable to the petty cash custodian. Ranag? So dito, stop share ko muna para makita mo. Since nag-establish tayo ng petty cash fund, the only journal entry here is to debit petty cash fund equal to 5,000 pesos and then to credit cash in bank kasi doon natin galing yung petty cash fund. So debit petty cash fund, credit cash in bank is the only journal entry here. Same thing sa fluctuating. Under fluctuating, the journal entries to debit petty cash fund, credit cash in bank, equal to 5,000 pesos. Next, punta tayo sa next transaction. Ano sabi dito? November 20 to December 15. Again, November 20 to December 15. Ano nangyari no November 20 to December 15? The petty cash custodian paid the following from the petty cash fund, all supported by properly approved petty cash vouchers. Listen up, guys. As a general rule, yung mga expenses na yan, dapat i-record sila ng magkakahiwalay. Meaning, under the fluctuating, the journal entry is to debit transportation expense, debit representation expense, debit freight for merchandise purchase, then debit computer repairs and maintenance expense. Pero, for the purposes of discussing this topic, is it okay na i-add na lang natin yung mga yan? Ibig sabihin, we will have one account only for expenses and then para sa lahat na yun. So, one-five. Once again, one-five plus one-two plus one-three then plus nine-twenty. The total expenses, right, is equal to four nine-twenty. So, stop share ko muna para makita mo yung journal entry. Under the impressed fund method, kailan tayo nire-record ng expenses? Not upon incurrence, but only upon replenishment. Ibig sabihin, no entry tayo here sa impressed fund method. Next, under the fluctuating fund method, nagre-record tayo ng expenses upon incurrence. Therefore, our journal entry here is to debit expenses and then to credit petty cash fund equal to the total expenses incurred, which is for 920. So as you can see, alright, para hindi magbago yung balance ni Petty Cash Fund sa impress, hindi tayo nag-credit ng Petty Cash Fund. So kung tatanungin ka ngayon, how much is the Petty Cash balance as of December 15? Under the impressed fund method, your answer is 5,000 still. But under the fluctuating fund method, our answer is 5,000 minus 4,920 or 80 pesos na lang. So magkaiba sila. Next, balik tayo sa share screen ko. December 16, ano nangyari ng December 16? On December 16, ang sabi ng problem, the petty cash custodian submitted the above petty cash vouchers to request for replenishment of the fund. A check amounting to 4920 was issued to the petty cash custodian. Please take note of this phrase. Why? Because if there is a check that is issued in favor of the petty cash custodian, ang assumption natin dun is replenishment yon. So nagkaroon dito ng replenishment. So what will be the journal entries under the two methods? Under the impressed fund method, the journal entries to debit, right? Expenses, because dito pa lang tayo magre-record ng expenses upon replenishment. And then credit, cash in bank, equal to 4920 while under the fluctuating fund method, since nag-debit ka na ng expenses a while ago, hindi ka na pwedeng mag-debit ng expenses. So, PCF, debit, then credit cash in bank, equal to 4,920. So, sa impressed fund method, upon replenishment or sa balance sheet date ka lang, nagre-record ng expense, not upon incurrence. Next, punta tayo sa next entry. Ano sabi dito? December 16, to December 31. Ano nangyari? December 16 to December 31. Ano nangyari nun? The petty cash custodian paid the following from the petty cash fund. So may binayaran ulit si custodian. Magkano yung total niyan? 340 plus 14. That's 1740. Again, under the impressed fund method, anong entry natin? Under the impressed fund method, we have no entry. Under fluc the fluctuating, the journal entries, debit expenses, credit, uh, petty cash fund. And that is equal to 1,740. Next, 
So, pang nangyari. December 31. Ano nangyari no December 31? On December 31, a count of the petty cash fund revealed the following composition. Bills and coins, petty cash voucher, and then that's it. Sabi ng baba, the fund was not replenished on this day. So sabi nga natin kanina, hindi lang balance or fix ang petty cash fund balance under the impressed fund method upon replenishment kapag hindi bangga yung replenishment at expense. E bangga sila kanina. Then second exception is kapag nagkaroon ng incurrence of expense, may incurrence kanina, then walang replenishment. So here, there will be an adjusting entry. What is that? We have to debit expenses and then to credit the petty cash fund. Why? Because kapag hindi mo yan ginawa, understated ang expenses mo, then overstated ang iyong cash. So we have to make an adjusting journal entry at the end of each period if there are incurrence of expenses without replenishment. Under the fluctuating fund method, we don't have to prepare any adjusting journal entry. Why? Because we already recorded the expenses upon incurrence. So wala tayong problema sa fluctuating. For you to see, what will be the journal entry? Again, the journal entries to debit expense, credit PCF, and then no entries sa fluctuating. Anak? Then on January 1, kailangan mong i-reverse yan. So what will be the journal entry? Debit PCF, credit expenses, equal to 1740. So yung adjusting journal entry na ginawa mo at the end of the year, i-reverse mo rin siya at the beginning of the year. Sa fluctuating, wala naman tayong adjusting entry last year. Therefore, wala rin tayong magiging reversing entry. Next, January 1 to January 8. Ano nangyari nung January 1 to January 8? Ano nangyari nun? The petty cash custodian paid the following. Under the impressed, wala pa rin tayong pake sa no entry. But under fluctuating, of course, debit expenses, credit, petty cash, fund tayo. Which is equal to magkano total niyan, guys? 1.8 plus 1.3 plus 1.20 or that's equal to 3,220. And last, on January 9. Ano nangyari ng January 9, guys? No? January 9. The petty cash custodian submitted the petty cash vouchers evidencing payments from December 16 through January 8. A check amounting to 7960 was issued to the petty cash custodian for its replenishment and to increase its balance by 3,000. So what will be the journal entry here? Debit expenses. Magkano na yung total? Right? Stop share ko, right? Magkano na yung total expenses na hindi pa natin nababayaran? That is, 1740 and all right, the 3220. So 1740 plus 3220, that is 4960. So debit expenses equal to 4960. Credit cash in bank, which is equal to 7960. Then apparently debit petty cash fund equal to 3000. Yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na kapag, all right, nagkaroon ng replenishment and hindi equal yung replenishment sa amount of expenses, asahan mo that petty cash fund balance will not be equal or will not be fixed. Because here, ang petty cash fund balance na natin this time is 8,000 kasi nadagdagan ng 3,000. Under the fluctuating, the journal entry here is just to debit the petty cash fund and credit cash in bank equal to 7,960 because nag-record naman na tayo ng expenses. So we don't, we no longer have to record any expenses. So those are the necessary journal entries and the differences between the impressed fund method and the fluctuating fund method. Now, punta tayo sa next topic. The next topic here will be the accounting for shortage or overage. Again, punta ngayon tayo sa accounting for shortage or overage. So here, sa accounting for shortage or overage, meron tayong dalawang accounting procedure na pwede mong gamitin. Right? Tuturo ko pareho. Don't worry, guys. Una, is i-compare mo muna yung iyong per record sa iyong per count. So ngayon, makinig. Let's say, ang baon mo sa isang araw, again, for example, may baon ka sa isang araw na isang libo. Grabe, ang yaman mo, no? Isang libo yung baon mo. Isang libo, baon mo isang araw. Mag-grab ka papunta sa school. Ibig sabihin, alright, mamamasahe ka. 
or meron kang transportation expense equal, sabihin na natin to 100. Ngayon, magmi-merienda ka sa umaga. Ang merienda mo sa umaga, umabot ng 50. Nag-lunch break ka. So, ang lunch break mo, medyo mayaman ka. Umabot ng 250. Magmi-merienda ka ulit sa hapon kasi medyo rich kid ka nga at gumastos ka ng 80. And then apparently, ano pang gagawin mo? For example, uh, anong gagawin mo? Mamamasahe ka ulit pabalik. So, gagastos ka ng 100. So, magkano natitira mo pera? Kano pa natitira mo pera? Lamay natin. So, 1,000 minus 100 minus 50 minus 250 minus 80 and minus 100. May natitira pa ang 420. Ngayon, ganito. Nung ginawa mo, pumunta ka ngayon sa SM. Nanood ka ng sine. IMAX. IMAX normally cost 420 pesos. Ngayon, pagdating mo sa counter, nilabas mo lahat ng pera mo. Sabi mo dun sa cashier, Miss, eto po, ang bayad ko, 420 po yan. Ngayon, bago ibigay nung di cashier yung ticket mo, anong meron? Binilang niya muna, of course, yung pera mo. Pagkabilang niya ng pera mo, based sa count niya, ang nabilang niya lang is 418 pesos. Right? Sabi niya, Sir, kulang po ng dalawang piso yung binayad niyo. Ngayon, pwede mo bang sabihin to? Ah, Miss sales lady, hindi po. Tingnan mo yung per record ko. Binigyan ako ng isang libo ng nanay ko. Gumasos ako ng isang daan. Alright? Gumasos ako ng 50, 250, etc., etc. So, ibig sabihin, 420 po talaga yan. Pwede mo bang ipilit yun sa cashier? Of course not. Tama ba? Ibig sabihin ngayon, we always has have to compare per record and per count at mas totoo ang per count. So, if per record now is higher than per count, Asahan mo dito na may lumalabas na shortage. But if the per count, sabihin na natin 430 pesos, then 420 yung per record, asahan mo dito, nanganak yung mga pera mo. Joke lang, hindi ka naman, right? SPG pala to. Ibig sabihin yan, sumobra yung pera mo. Therefore here, meron ulit tayong tinatawag na overage. So to illustrate cash shortage and overage now, let's try to solve illustrative problem number two. So, no meron dito. PB Company established a petty cash fund of 5,000 for incidental expenses on June 1, 2016. At the end of the month, the count of cash on hand indicated that 670 and 40 centavos remain in the fund. So, yan yung per count natin. A review of the petty cash vouchers disclosed that the following expenses had been paid during the month from the petty cash so, magkano ginasas natin? It's 341.6 plus 1321.4 plus 780 plus 837.6 then plus 1,000 pesos or gumasas tayo ng 4,280.6. So, if 5,000 yung petty cash fund balance natin, may natitira pa dapat na 719.4. Kaso magkano na lang per count? Nung nagbilang tayo, 670.4 na lang. Ibig sabihin, may nawawala ngayon equal to 49 pesos. That is why, illustrative problem number 2, 49 pesos is our final answer. Next, here, sa accounting for shortage and overage pa din. Minsan, hindi lang per record at per count ang ating consider. Ang consider natin is yung tinatawag natin per accountability, and meron tayong tinatawag na per count. So, ano ngayon ang point ko dito? Bakit iniba ko ang pangalan ni per record? Because minsan, hindi lang cash na ganyan kadali ang ating binibilang, but rather, petty cash box or yung lagayan ng petty cash fund ang ating binibilang. And if that will be the case, ang per accountability natin is lahat ng items na nilagay mo sa petty cash box. So, per accountability, are the items put inside. So all items put inside the petty cash box are our accountability. Ano yung mga items na yan? First will be the petty cash fund itself. Second will be the, sabihin na natin, postage stamps. Another thing na pwede mong ilagay dyan will be employee salaries. Pwede mo ring ilagay dyan yung ano pa, yung collection. For sabihin na nating birthday party. 
Kapag may birthday party, magkakaroon ng collection or ambagan and then pwedeng ilagay din yon sa loob. Basta ang lagi mo lang tatandaan per accountability natin, are all the items put inside? At ang per account naman natin or as accounted, are all items seen inside? Ibig sabihin, nung inopen mo, again, nung inopen mo yung petty cash box, ano yung mga items na nakita mo sa loob? And then, same rule. If per accountability is higher, asahan mo na meron pa shortage. But if per accountability is lower, ibig sabihin, mas marami yung nakita mo sa loob, asahan mo dito na meron pa rin tayong overage. So, to put into problems all these concepts, please now go to the last problem here sa Petty Cash Fund and that is illustrative problem number three. Ready? So, in your cash count of the Petty Cash Fund of Berna Company, as of July 4, 2016, you found the following items in the Petty Cash Box. So, meron tayong bills and coins counted. Approved and signed petty cash vouchers, IOU, all right, from an employee, no pa. A check thrown by the company dated July 15, an unsigned pay envelope payable to an employee on leave. The envelope has been opened and there was no money inside. Indicated in the envelope is the amount of 1-5. Iba tayo dun. So dito, ilagay muna natin yung per accountability natin. Ready? So, per accountability natin is 10,000 impressed balance plus yung collection natin na 1,500. So, ibig sabihin, 10,000 plus 1,500 will give us 11,500. So, meron tayong accountability na 11,500. Ngayon, magkano yung per account natin? Magkano yung nakita natin sa loob? Calculator. We have 1,450 plus 3,300 plus 800 plus 1,400. Plus 2,000 and then don't add 1,500. Sir, bakit po hindi i-add si 1,500? Kasi yung 1,500 na yun, envelope na lang siya. Wala na siyang pera. Alright? Ibig sabihin ng per account natin dito is 8,950. So per accountability natin is 11,500. Per account is 8,950. Therefore, may nawawala na magkano? 8,950 minus uh, 11,500 or that is equal to 2550. That is why requirement number two, determine the amount of cash shortage or overage. Our final answer is 2550 shortage. Again, requirement number two, 2550 shortage is our final answer. Then requirement one, determine the petty cash fund that will be included in the cash balance. So, alamin mo lahat ng pera dyan. Ano yung mga pera dyan? First is yung 1450. Bills and coins yan. Pangalawa, is yung 800 pesos na approved petty cash voucher. Eh sir, hindi po ba? Resibo na lang yan. Expenses na po yan. Yes, tama ka doon. It's just that. Kailan mo siya ginastos? Ginastos mo lang siya. Kailan? On July 1 to 4. So ang ibig sabihin yan, kung July 1 to 4 mo siya ginastos, asahan mo na pera pa yan as of June 30. So meron tayo dito ng 2250 kaso may nahalo dyan na 1.5 kasi may envelope na nilagay sa loob and then na-open na daw yun, then wala nang laman. So ang assumption dito, baka nahalo siya sa loob. Kaya ibabawas natin yung 1.5. So minus 1.5, see to it now that 750 pesos is our final answer for requirement number one. Number three, what if the unsigned pay envelope is sealed and the money is, is still inside? So kapag yung pera nasa loob pa ng envelope, magbabago ang per count natin. Per accountability, 11.5 pa rin. Pero per count, kasama na si 1.5. So magkano na per count? 1.450 plus 3.3 plus 800 plus 1.4 plus 2,000. Then this time, plus 1.5 or ang per count na natin this time is 10.450. Once again, per accountability is 11.5. Therefore, may shortage tayo dito na 1,050. So, letter B, same questions lang to. Letter B, final answer is 1,050 shortage. Then, sa letter A, magkano sasagot mo dyan? Yung 1,450 at 800, kasama pa rin sila. But this time, plus 1,500 kasi may pera pa sa loob. Then, apparently, minus 
Yung 1,500 ulit kasi hindi yan sa atin. Therefore, 2,250 will be our final answer in letter A. So kapag wala ng laman sa loob, hindi mo yun siya kasama sa per count. Pero kapag may laman pa sa loob, kasama siya sa per count. But certainly, whether may laman siya or wala, it is included in the total accountability of the petty cash custodian. So that's the end for counting for petty cash fun. If nagustuhan mo tong video na to, please subscribe and please do ring the notification button. Thank you guys. God bless.